It sounded good, though. Thank you, Bubba Bowles. <laughs> Take your Bible, Matthew 6 again. Week number seven, I think. We've talked about the Lord's Prayer as a prayer about resting. It's a prayer about reverencing. It's a prayer about reigning. I've got these all written here in my Bible. It's a prayer about uh, uh, reigning, a prayer about resigning, a prayer about requesting, a prayer about releasing. And tonight, we will talk about this thought, and that is that the Lord's Prayer, or this prayer that the Lord told us to, to and for the manner in which we're to pray, it is a prayer about relying. A prayer about relying. The portion that we will use tonight is the portion out of verse 13 where the Bible says, and it's, it begins with the word and. So we know as we began two weeks ago when we got to verse 11 where the scripture says, give us this day our daily bread, that about requesting, that he linked verse 11 to verse 12, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and he links 12 with 13 with the word and, and it's, it's our passage tonight. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, or from the evil one, depending upon your translation. Well, we, we, we've been in a place throughout the course of this Lord's Prayer where, we've, where we have uh, been at the feet of Christ, and, and we, we, we see God as our Father, and, and the, places that, the place that He resides in, and much that we learn about Him there. And, and then we, we, we praise him for all those things and then we profess our desire to see his kingdom come and to see his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. And, and then a couple of weeks ago, we got into that part in verse 11 where we began to uh, make requests and talking about our daily life experiences. And we asked him to, to uh, provide for us, give us this day our daily bread. And then last week was about forgiveness. Well, tonight we go, we go farther into this idea, and, it, and it's still really along the lines of, 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 our, uh, of our releasing and forgiveness and these things, but it, but it carries it a, a step farther. And, and that is into the fact that we know that sin has blighted, would be the word, blighted our past. We've all got things in our past that we wish weren't there, but, but they are. And, and they're there and I pray that they're forgiven and taken care of. But it also lets us know that we need to live carefully that those things don't come again. And, and, and that's, what, that's what this portion of the Lord's Prayer talks about is, is we, as, we as born again believers, we don't want to do anything that would dishonor or disgrace the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, so, so that's really what we talk about in, in this deal. Now, we, 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 we talk about battles that we face in life, and, and, and we all have them. And, and this verse, it, it really deals with the greatest battle that any of us have. We, we, we would say, if we were to ask individually, what is your greatest battle? And, and we would all have, and many would be different, but, but if you really begin to think of it, think about it, the greatest battle that we face is the battle of temptation. And, and, and that's, what he, that's what he talks about on this deal. Now he's addressed some things that we, that we worry about and we fret about and, and that we sort of battle for in life. And, and, and we could go back through the little bit of the Lord's Prayer and we could say, this battle, we're talking about the greatest battle that we face. Well, the greatest battle we face is not to put food on our table and clothes on our backs. That would be our, our, daily, our daily bread thing. Uh, our greatest battle is, is not to, to approach God for, give, to, to for, for forgiveness or, or even to battle to forgive those that we find it hard, as we talked about a week or so ago, that we find it hard that, to forgive who have treated us wrongly, but but it's a battle that we all face, and we face it every single day. And it's the battle of temptation. Now the battle of temptation has, has a lot of different uh, 
different things. You, you would be tempted with things that I wouldn't be tempted with, and I would be tempted with things that wouldn't be much of a, much of a step for you, but we all have this battle of temptation. And, and so tonight, that's what we want to talk about. We want to talk about this thing, and we're going to talk about three things about temptation. We're going to talk about the problem and the power of temptation, and we're going to finish by talking about the plea in temptation. So we begin with the problem of temptation. Now, he, he, he tells us to pray, and if we go back before the, into the ninth verse, before the actual model prayer begins, we remember Jesus said this. He said, in this manner, therefore pray. And then he began to go through those seven things that we've talked about, and then he gets down to this line in the 13th verse where it simply says this, and lead us not into temptation. Now, now we, we want to spend a few minutes talking about this and, 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 and kind of comparing it or relating it with our own personal battle with temptation. Now, one of the things that we need to know is this about this prayer. We cannot just live the quote-unquote Christian life any way we want to, behaving and doing and, and all of these things the way we want to, and pray this prayer and think that it's going to have any effect on our life. Because when we pray the word, this part of this prayer that, that says, and lead us not into temptation, it presupposes something. It presupposes that we have already made a decision in our own personal heart and life that we're going to follow the Lord. That's presupposed in that. It, 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 it's a presupposition that's made that, 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 that we're going to follow and we're going to look to the leadership of the Lord in our personal life. Now, I think that we would all agree. In fact, I know we would. We would agree that, that, that He is our Heavenly Father and our Heavenly Father is sovereign and He controls all of life. And as the old songwriter, I meant to look up the song, but I, I, I forgot about it. But uh, the old songwriter wrote about that He leads His dear children along. And, and, and we agree with all of those things. And, and, and since it's true that, that, that he does all of those things, does it also mean, as we read here in this, as this verse begins to unfold, does it also mean that God leads us into places where we're tempted to sin? Well, let me answer that before you do, because the, 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 the resounding answer to that question is no. It's no. And there's no question about that. Listen to what the Bible says, because James, he addresses this in James, the first chapter, the 13th verse. And it's there that the Bible says this, let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone in the same way. So we ask the question, does, does God lead us intentionally lead us into places where we're tempted to do things we ought not do that you, you don't think about it and you don't pray about it because the answer is no it, it, it's just a flat no you, you go back to the other end of the bible from james james is at, at at the end and you go back to the other end of the book of genesis and and we find there when adam was tempted and adam fell into sin and in the garden of eden adam tried to lay the blame somewhere else in fact adam tried to lay the blame at the feet of the lord here's what the bible says in genesis 3 the 12th verse then the man that's adam said the woman whom you he's talking to the lord the woman whom you gave to be with me she gave me of the tree and i ate but i tell you tonight the fault didn't lie with the lord the fault in this occasion was with Adam and Adam alone. That, that, that's where the fault was at. Listen, God never leads us into direct contact with sin. He, he doesn't do that. But, if, but as we travel the course of life, we know that oftentimes in our life that we come to what we will call the crossroads or the fork in the road or however you re refer to something like that. And we get to that and when we get there, we have an option. 
We have an option, and we can either take the path that leads us away from, from where the Lord would have us and for His will for our lives, or we can go the direction that, that we know that, or that we sense that He wants us to go. Every trial that we face in life, it, 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 it comes complete with the potential to fail. We may sin. We will sin. We do sin. And when we do, the fault does not lie with someone else. The fault certainly does not lie with the Lord. The fault lies with us. The fault lies with me. So, so what, is, what is the Lord telling us to pray? What, what, is, he, what is he telling us to pray? Uh, well, one guy, he, he answered that question this way. Let me just share what he said. He said, he, he, his thinking on that little question was this, Lord, please do not lead us into a trial which will present a temptation stronger than our power to resist it. Now, let, let, let me go back, because I, I just read this this evening. I didn't know this until then. I didn't have anywhere to put this into my, into my notes tonight, but I, I, I don't remember if it was... Uh, the fellow that wrote the, the series of books through the Bible, who was that, J. Vernon McGee? What? That was J. Vernon McGee. And, and Wearsby, and it was one of those two, but they made this statement about, about this verse. And, and he said, when we read that verse and, and we get the word lead, we get a picture of, you know, kind of like we do, if, if you walk your dog, you, you lead your dog, or if you walk your horse, you lead your horse. And, and that is that, that, that wherever you go, that's where the horse or the dog or the animal or whatever it is, that, that's where they go. <clears throat> Both of them said this. They said, a better word for our understanding is not the word lead, but it's the word leave, L-E-A-V-E. -E. And, 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 and it would be to our understanding that he is not intentionally leading us into places where we're going to mess up in the places where we're tempted and in places that we're weak. So I, I just wanted to throw that in there. So, so, so let's get back to this and let's answer this question about temptation. Where does it come from? Where does temptation come from anyway? Well, James addresses that as well. And James lets us know that it arises from within the human heart. Here's what he says, James 1, 14 and 15, but each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then, when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it's full grown, you know what it brings forth? Death. There, there, there's a process to this thing. You see, our flesh, and, and this is even for us who are here on Sunday night, for goodness sake, did you know that every one of us in this room, and I can be like the Apostle Paul and say, I'm the chief. Every one of us in this room, our flesh is flawed. Our flesh is given over, and we have a desire for, for sin, and we have a desire for those things. Listen to what the Bible says in Ephesians 4.22, that you put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt, according to the deceitful lust. Then in Mark, the seventh chapter, the 21st and 22nd verse, we read this. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. And where'd that come from? From, it come from within us. It come from within us. You see, when, when, when temptation comes our way, we've already stated it's not the Lord's fault. It's not even the devil's fault. Because we like to lay things off on him too, don't we? Flip Wilson sure did. The devil made me do it. It's not the devil's fault. It's not the Lord's fault. It's not the world's fault. It's not, it's not the fault of your upbringing. It comes from within us. It's, it, 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 it's us. 
It's us. It's our flawed, fallen nature that craves vileness and sinfulness. Now I know we come to church on Sunday night and we want to get pumped up and jacked up and, and I know when we hear that we're vile and we're flawed and we're fallen and, and, and we crave sin and the vileness of it, I, I know it's a hard pill to swallow, but I'm going to tell you, according to the Word of God, it's just the truth. It just is. See, temptation in and of itself is not a sin. We know our Lord was tempted. Temptation in and of itself is not a sin, but, 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 but the instant temptation is embraced and the instant temptation is pursued, sin is always the result. And in that verse we read a while ago, sin, when it's full grown, becomes and it brings forth death. So, so, so we see that, we, we, we recall the story of David in, in 2 Samuel 11, when, when, when the Bible tells us that he was, he was walking upon the, the roof of his house one day, at the top of his house, and he's seen across the way, he's seen, he seen young, beautiful Bathsheba over there, and she's nude. The fact that he was outside, and she was outside, and she was nude, none of that was a sin. But it became a sin when she became desired by him and he embraced that desire and he pursued that desire and sin was born and, and, and the end of that sin we know if you know that story and the way that it plays out the, that, that story brought about death and destruction for his family temptation is a problem within me. Adrian Rogers, I think he's one that I've, that I've heard credited with this little statement. Don't know if it was his to begin with or not, but he said this. He said, the heart of the problem is the problem of the heart. That's where temptation comes from. It comes from within us. It comes from within us. When we pray, when we get to this part of this Lord's Prayer and, and we begin to pray, Lord, the, lead us not into temptation what, what what we're really doing there is we're calling upon the sovereign holy god of this universe we're, we're, we're praising him we're seeking his will and we're depending upon his we're depending upon him for all of the different things that we that we need in life and in, in, in fact let me credit wearsby with this he said he said when i pray forgive my debts he said i'm looking to the past he said, when I pray, give me this day my daily bread, he said, I'm looking to the present. He said, when I pray, Lord, lead me not into temptation, I'm looking to the future where, where, where I've not been yet. So, so as we prayed this prayer, and he, as he told us in verse 9, in this manner, therefore, pray. And, and, we've, and we've prayed according to this manner, and we've dealt with our sin. We've confessed our sins, and our, our sins have been forgiven. And we begin to pray, and, 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 we, and we're praying this prayer. We're declaring an awareness. I'm a flawed individual. And, and Lord, I need your help. I need your strength. I need your direction to keep me from that sin arising in my life again. I, I can tell you, I don't know if any of you can do the same or not, but I, I, I look back over the course of my Christian life that began as, a, as an older teenager and, 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 and carried through until today. And, and I, I remember different times and points in, in my Christian life. And I remember through the course of time, there would be certain things at certain instances that you would struggle with. And, and they would be personal sins that you would struggle with and, and, and you would get there and, 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 and you would commit that sin and you would pray. Lord, I, I, I've done it again. Forgive me of my sin and, and Lord, help me not. And then I remember whether it would, sometimes it might be a day, sometimes it might be a week, sometimes it might be a month, and, and, and it happens again, and you sit there, and you, it, it just, it, it, it almost broke over you. You say, oh no, I did it again. You pray again, Lord, give me the strength 
Give me, the, give me whatever it is that I need to be able to do this. And, and, and finally, at least in my life, and I had to conquer everything because, you know, we discover new things as we go along. But, but you look back over the things you struggled with as a 17-year-old and a 20-year-old and a 30-year-old and a 40-year-old. And, and many of those things were past, but, but, but we're past those things because, because we, have, we have Him helping us. And listen, until it becomes a desire of our heart and a desire of our life not to stay in the same old sinful mindset in the same old sinful way until that becomes the desire of our heart and our life we will stay but he can lead us out of those things and he can deliver us from those things I tell you tonight I tell you tonight Temptation is a problem that must be dealt with. Well, we, we go to number two, and that is the power, the power of temptation. Now, temptation is, is great because we're prone to failure. Temptation in our life it, it, it is great, and, and, and the, the likelihood of us giving in or, or doing those things is, is, is great because we're, we're, we're just prone to fail. We're, we're, we're prone to, to mess up. And, and, and listen, we, we, we've already discovered in, in, in Scripture that, that our drive for sin and our hunger for sin plus our capacity for sin, it dwells within us. It was passed from our, from our Father, not, not our Heavenly Father, but from our Earthly Father. And that wasn't George Washington just because we was American. It's from Adam. Oh, great, 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 great to the many times, Papa Adam. That's one thing he passed to us. We have the capacity for it. We have the drive for it. And we have the hunger for it. And it all comes from within us. It, it all comes from within us. Temptation, <clears throat> temptation is, is the outgrowth of who we are by nature. We by nature are sinful people. That's our nature because that was the nature of our, of our, of our father Adam. That, that, was, that was his nature. That, that is now our nature. And you know, a lot of times we say things like this when, when, we, when we succumb to temptation, we give in to temptation, we'll say, man, the, the devil really knows what to put in front of me. You ever felt that way? The truth is, it's really not so much the devil. It's us. It's us. It, it, it's us that's the problem. You see, we're only, we're, we're only tempted by it. And, and I told you things were, things were, temptations were different. We, we all have different temptations. And, 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 and we're, only, we're, we're only tempted by things that our fallen nature desires. You know, we, we had lunch back there today. And, and uh, there was several different kind of desserts. Now, if, if there had been no dessert on the table, I was good. I, I, can, I can take it or leave it, or if it's there and I like it, I'll eat it. But hell, when people say, I'm just craving something sweet, I, I don't have that temptation. When I do, man, I can stop at the five and at the corner of the little store and get me a little Debbie oatmeal cream pie, and I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm good. Well, well, what temptation does it, 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 it is, is the, and the different things that we're tempted with, not oatmeal cream pies, but the things we're tempted with, they come from our fallen nature and, our, and the desires that we have. And, and, and oftentimes what we do is, is, is we continually go back to the same place. And when we go back to the same place in our, in our life and we go back to that same circumstance and we put ourselves in that same place, then that's when we begin to find out how strong of a pull that temptation has in our life. And, and, and that's where we are. You see, well, one, one fellow put it this way. He said, when we're tempted, he said, what's happening is this, is the old man, that's, that's who we were, B.C., before Christ, before we were saved. It's, it's the old man baiting the new man. 
And the, and, and the old man, the old Stephen, the old Peter, the old Eddie, he, he's trying to, the old uh, us is trying to get the new us to go back to the places that we used to go and do the things that we used to do and, and all of those things. And, and, and listen, the, 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 that, that's what happens when we're tempted. And, and, and Satan, he, he, he's not in control of all of those things, but I'm gonna tell you, it is his desire that we would give in to temptation because he wants, he, he, wants to, he wants us to do something. He wants us to mess our life up. He wants us to, to, to foul up in all of these things and to sin, to disgrace and to dishonor the name of our Lord. That's what he wants us to do. So he will continually, he, he, will, he will try if he could, if he were in control of leading us and he's not. But, but he, would, he would lead us, and that's that old man that we all have that goes back to that same place and gives in to that same sin over and over and over and over. And I tell you tonight that, that temptation is a powerful opponent. But most Christians, most Christians have no idea to the real power of temptation. But you, you, we, we hear people say something along this line. They, they will say, man, that, that temptation was so powerful that I couldn't resist it. Well, I, I tell you what, in, in, in truth, here, here's the truth. When we give in, or, or a person that gives in, and we're among those people sometimes, when we give in to temptations, enticement, or it's alluring, alluring in our life, then we don't, we, don't have, we don't know anything about its real power. You see, it's only the person it's only the man, the woman, the boy, or the girl that, that stands against temptation. If we give in, we don't know much about its power. But if we stand, if we stand in what we believe, and we stand strong in, in what the Word of God teaches us, and we stand strong to our Christian faith and our Christian principles, then that's when we begin to know how strong the power of temptation is. You see, you look back over your life and I can look back over mine and I can look back to the times that I gave in to whatever my struggle was at different points and times in my life. And when I would just give in, I didn't have to fight temptation. But we fight temptation when we say no. We fight temptation when we stand up to it. We fight temptation when we stand firm and, and, and we're standing for the things that we believe that the Word of God wants to do in our life. And, and, and I tell you tonight that, that all of us, thanks be to God, we have the opportunity to be, to be triumphant over temptation in all of our lives. Listen, man, the, 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 the Bible, the Bible tells us that that, 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 that power is available to us. The Bible tells us that, that we're able to stand against it and, and if we want to and, and if we wish to and if we desire to. And, and the Lord has even given us promises. And you remember what the Bible says about his promises? It says he's not slack concerning them. Well, let, 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 me, let me give you a couple of these promises. In fact, three of them. Isaiah 43, 2. When you pass through the waters, let me even know what it says next. I'll be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. And when you walk through the fire, it says you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame even scorch you. Isn't that a wonderful promise? And he's not slack concerning those promises. Listen to what it says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. 2 Peter 2, verse 9. Then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. 
I'm telling you, the Bible promises us deliverance from temptation. And it promises us that we can stand against temptation. And we should never have to stand up and say, man, the temptation was just so great, I couldn't stand it. Because when we say that, we're saying, I did not have faith in the promises of God the Father. And we need that. We need that. And temptation is a powerful foe. Temptation is a powerful foe. But I tell you tonight that temptation, as powerful as it seems to be, is not even in the same ballpark as our Lord. He is so much greater, so much stronger than, than temptation. So, so we have the problem of temptation. We have the power of temptation. And then we have the plea the plea in temptation. Now, now the verse closes this way. He, he, he's already said, Lord, and, and lead us not into temptation. But here's the plea. But deliver us from evil. Now, we all ought to know that we have an enemy. You, you know you have an enemy? If you're a born-again child of God, you say, I've got many. Well, if you're a born-again child of God, you've got at least one. And, and, and listen, our enemy, Satan, he wants us to fail. He wants us to fall. He, he, in fact, the, the ultimate goal of our enemy is to use us and, and to use something in our life to bring disgrace and dishonor to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father. So you remember this from day to day, and I know this is not encouraging news, but, 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 but our enemy, the devil, he desires to see you and me fall. He desires to see us fail. Listen to what the Bible says in Ephesians 6, the 12th verse. The Bible tells us this, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, our enemy is not the person that disagrees with us. Our enemy is not the, it's not the church that has abandoned what we call the old paths and the old way of doing things and, 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 and does new stuff. That's not our enemy. Our enemy is not the charismatic church down the road. Our, our enemy does not wear a body of flesh and blood. But the Bible teaches us that our enemy is spiritual in nature. And, 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 and he must be battled with, with guess what? Spiritual weapons. If, if, if you recall, man, when, when Jesus was tempted in Matthew 4, 1 through 11 in there, we find that, well, what, what did he fight with? He didn't say, put your hands up. He, he fought his battle with the wisdom of God, the word of God, the power of God, spirit, spiritual things. And, and, and listen, our success comes the same way. If we're going to be successful, if we're going to stand against the, the wiles of the enemy and the wiles of the devil, and if we're going to stand against the temptations, we're going to have to stand the same way. We're going to have to first of all come to the understanding that, that we personally can't stand against all of those things that come our way. We need, we need help. You know, if, if somebody told me tonight, walking out the back door, if, if Kenneth told me, Preacher, I'm going to be back, I'm going to be over at your house at about 8 o'clock, and I'm just going to whoop you. As tired as I am on Sunday, he probably could. And I know he could catch me. But if I really thought he was going to come whoop me, I would find the two or three of you that like me, and I would say, Hey, I need you to come over there to Farm Road 819 about 8 o'clock tonight, because Kenneth Wilson is coming over there to whoop me. So if I, had, if I had a physical enemy, then I would gather up some physical help. Man, I'd get Sammy to come. He could fly over in an airplane and shoot a bomb at him. And Eddie could come sing and, 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 and something. And a couple of you just bad. I'd get you to come to whoop him because I probably couldn't whoop him. But we're not fighting a physical battle. Our enemy's spirit. 
So if we're going to win this battle that we're in, we're going to have to win it spiritually. You say, well, how do we do that? We understand the physical, get on our boxing gloves and, and put on and, and do all of those things. Well, well, here's the way we do it. The Bible tells us. The Bible tells us this in Ephesians 6, beginning with the 10th, the, with the 10th verse. Reads on down to the 18th verse, and I'm not going to read it. I'm going to read two verses. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Let me know what comes next. He says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You see, we couldn't gather up a big enough crowd to win that battle. The scripture tells us that if we're going to win that battle, we're going to have to put on the whole armor of God. He goes on to say in that very next verse that we don't wrestle against flesh and but against principalities, powers, and rulers of the darkness of this age, spiritual hosts, wickedness, and heavenly places. Therefore, he says it again, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to just stand. That's how we do it. That's how we do it. Is we put on the armor of God. We're in a, we're in a spiritual battle. And there's only one way to win a spiritual battle, and that's to win it spiritually. And we win that spiritual battle by, by putting on the whole armor of God. And, and, and listen, I, I, I believe that was true for Jesus when he was tempted. I believe it's true for us. I believe it's true for, for you and I today. And, and I, I do believe this, that he will not fail us. We know the scripture says that he'll never leave us nor forsake us, but I also don't, I, I don't believe that he will fail us in the day of battle. You say, well, when is the day of battle? Well, if you're anything like me, it's every day. Every day is a battle. It, it may be a different kind. It, it, it's all kind of different things that we're tempted with, different places, different folks, different situations, and all of those things. So, so I think we could truly say that every day is the day of battle. And if we're going to withstand, we're going to have to put on the whole armor every day, every single day. I was, I was looking over Facebook. It was, I think it was last night. Yes, I still am talking about this. And I don't remember if it was something Adrian Rogers had preached or somebody else. But, but this was the point that they were making. And, and I'm going to go back and listen to the whole sermon sometime if I can find it again. But, but, but he said this. He said, he said, you think about the people in the Bible that blew it. I mean, they just royally failed. He said, they didn't fail in their area of weakness. They failed in their area of strength. You say, why do you say that? Because, because there are times when we think, well, I, 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 don't need to, I don't need to put on the full armor of God today. I've, I've got this. But I'm telling you, you will most likely fail in your area, whatever your area of strength is, you'll, you'll be more likely to fail there than you will in the area of weakness. He, he, he went on to give a couple of illustrations. He said, he said, Abraham. Abraham is listed for us in what we call the Hall of Faith. And, and he's known for his faith, but where did he blow it? In his faith. When, when, when he wouldn't take the word of God that, that he said, I'm going to give you a son, and just because you're, you're this age and, and Sarah's this age, and he, he, he wouldn't take the thing that he becomes known for. He, 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 become, he becomes a failure at that point in, in what he's known to be the strongest for. And, and then he mentioned David. He said, what is David known for? And there's several things. We could say warrior and all those things. But, but David is known for his character. Where did he fail? In his character. And I say that to say this. There does not come a day. There does not come a time in your life nor in mine that we do not need 
the whole armor of God to stand up to the temptations that come our way. The victory is available. But the victory is only going to come to those who are willing to stand up and do the battle. If, if we're not willing to stand up, you know, we, if, if we were to pray this prayer, Lord, lead me not into temptation. And, and, and we, were, we were to pray that prayer, and, and, and we know that, man, we have, a, we have a temptation, we have a problem with lust. And then we were going to go home, and, and we were going to turn on that one-eyed monster, or get on the internet, and, and go to a website that we know that's what's there. Listen, we, we, we can't pray that prayer and go home and, and, and go to that website, or turn on that television channel, and think for a moment that we're going to have victory over it. You won't. We, 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 if our temptation was alcohol, but we knew that we were going to, that this week through the course of the week, we're going to go to somewhere where they, where they serve alcohol. But we prayed Sunday night there at church. We prayed, Lord, Lord, lead me not into temptation. Don't, 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 let, me, don't let me give in to this. But if we're going to go to that place intentionally and sit in that place, then listen, go, don't go there expecting victory. Fight the battle to keep yourself out of those temptation situations that you're in control of. And when we will do that, I know the things that tempt Steve Coward. I know them better than anybody except the Lord. So I know the things that I need to keep myself away from. I know the circumstances that I need to keep myself distance from. And if I will do that and it becomes the prayer of my heart, Lord, deliver me from temptation and, and, and lead me not, is that, is that part finished? Lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. If, if that will become the prayer of my heart and the desire of my life, then I can have victory. And I can have deliverance from these things. Victory's available. But it's only those that are serious about waging war. It's only for those who are serious about, about going in and, and fighting the battle and, and staying in there until we experience the Lord's victory in our life. About all I can tell you to close this up tonight is this. It's available. But it ain't free. It's available. But it ain't free. We, we, we've got to stay in there. Man, and, and tonight, if we're here and, and we need help, we need assistance in this battle of temptation, if we, we need something from the Lord, and, and listen, you know those things about your life, and I know them about mine. And I'm telling you tonight, if there's an area of our life that we need His help, it's available. But it's not available if we're just playing games. And it's not available if we're just speaking words. It's available if we're serious about doing business. And our blessed my Father, how grateful we are for your word. How grateful we are for your promises. And Lord, tonight we don't pretend to be people that are on top of the ball game. We don't pretend to be perfect. We don't pretend to even have it all together. Lord, we're just all a bunch of struggles. We kind of like that old television commercial. Sometimes we're just a bunch of settlers. But Lord, tonight we, we come to this place and, and you know our hearts, you know our lives. And Lord, if, if we've come into this place and, and, and there are some true to life battles that we're facing, there are some things that we're just struggling with temptations that have come our way. Lord, we find in Scripture that we don't have to live in that world. We don't have to live 
in, enslaved to those things that shouldn't be a part of our life. Victory is available to us tonight, and, and, and victory comes through you, and, and it comes from us putting on the whole armor of God. So, Lord, tonight as we close this service, I would that if there's one of us that, that would, whether we do it publicly or whether we do it privately there in the, in the seat where we sit, that, that we call upon you and we call upon you to lead us and to guide us and to direct us and, and, and Lord, to give us the strength to stay away from places we don't need to be. And Lord, that we would be able to stand against, not necessarily defeat, but just stand against this thing of temptation in our lives. Lord, tonight I can probably say that every one of us in this room has been saved. And I think that it would be the desire of our heart not for us in our life not to do anything that would bring dishonor or disgrace upon the name of our Lord. So Lord, help us, strengthen us, and deliver us. Move in our midst and speak to our hearts. In these next few moments, we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand and sing a verse of